Hi. So a little over a week ago, I posted a video talking about the music engineering stuff that I've been pursuing for a bit. And uh, I received a comment on that video that I'm going to read for you guys here in a moment because I think it sparks a good discussion. And unfortunately, that person, for whatever reason, decided to remove the comment from what I can tell before I got an opportunity to respond to it. So um, I'm removing their name because um, I'm not trying to call them out individually. I have no problem with comments like this. Um, it's just it sparks some things that I've been thinking about ever since entering this kind of engineering space in music. So the comment reads, I heard some examples you posted and they sound decent you you know what I don't need to read this to you guys I'm just gonna post it up you guys can pause the video right here and then we'll talk about it I have lots to unpack So first of all, I appreciate the comment, appreciate the compliments, and uh, mostly appreciate you taking the time to listen through some of the music. I'm assuming the couple of Chrome Coda songs that I have on my website as examples of some of the mixing and mastering work that I've done, unless if you went and listened to some of my own productions. But overall, I agree with pretty much everything that you said here. Um, I think pretty much anything that you pursue in life is going to be competitive to some degree, um, despite collaboration efforts and whatnot. And especially in the music field, um, you know, with how many people are doing this, producing and engineering, um, yeah, very competitive. Um, but not everyone finds success, you know, overall you just, you try your best and you keep on working at it, learning and see what happens in the end. I think when it comes to equipment, it's your responsibility as an engineer to constantly be researching and implementing new tools in your studio that can, you know, come up with solutions or develop technical skills that could help resolve potential issues in client mixes, regardless of whether it's digital plugins or analog hardware. Which, by the way, I would argue is probably more prevalent than ever because often engineers are receiving mixes these days from you know any bedroom producer who isn't necessarily a skilled mixing engineer. Where you know used to be, you'd have to pay to go into a studio to have someone record all of your stuff for you. Um, and I would argue that the market for engineers is increasing right alongside the market of producers and musicians creating this stuff. But make no mistake, I, uh, I absolutely love and am interested in all kinds of analog equipment for the future. Um, but like you pointed out, this stuff is not cheap and um, I can only justify adding so much stuff to the studio so fast depending on you know, how much work I'm receiving from people and so on and so forth. And on top of that, I haven't exactly dropped out of my own production work, so there's a little bit of bridging the gap with synthesizers and just, you know, producing versus engineering type equipment here in my studio. I would say that the majority of things that I've been investing in over the past few months doing this engineer work is digital plugins. And I would also argue that most engineers in these days of 2024 are doing the overwhelming majority of at least mix work in the box if not entirely. And then the analog equipment kind of serves as more of a sweetening tool in a lot of cases, kind of for the mix bus or you know final master chain, which yes, can obviously um, be a, a component of the, the final sound or the final result. And honestly, one of the mastering engineers that I respect and look up to a, a ton, um, I just saw recently that he decided to sell off his uh, Dangerous Music Convert 80 Plus converter, and he's kind of going back to the uh, just converters in his nice interface because he's only got, I think, one really nice analog compressor in his, in his uh, kind of desk setup there in his studio. And it's probably a little hard to justify having a $3,000 converter for one analog compressor that you sometimes choose to use. And otherwise, everything he's doing is in the box. And by the way, his mastering work sounds fantastic. So I guess this is the main point of this comment that I, I just can't get behind, man. Like, I'm aware of and, and know engineers, very successful engineers that do the entirety of their work in the box and get amazing results. And as a musician, in my opinion, if you're gonna search for an engineer to work on mixing and mastering your music for you, there's really only two elements that I think it should come down to. Their sound and their price. And maybe their flexibility with revisions if you're not 100% uh, on an established working relationship with them, but not at all the equipment that they have. 
If you hear the work that they've done, and especially on genres similar to your style, and it feels like they can help you achieve the results that you want for your music, then I guess I, I don't give a shit if they've got a near $10,000 Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor with a, a HG2 Saturator and three $4,000 or more converters, etc, etc. I feel like inherently it's just, a, it's just a silly thing for mainly us musicians to get hung up on um, because at the end of the day all that matters is the sound, man. Um, and because that's all that's going to matter to the audience that's listening to it, quite frankly. They're not going to care if it was analog or digital. And, you know, I would argue digital plugins just keep getting better and better, these emulations. Um, and I would say that the majority of your audience would need some like super, super expensive hi fi audio system to maybe pick out the differences if you had someone do you know, like an analog versus digital master from especially really talented engineers. I think it was Andrew Sheps who said, you know, when it comes to mixing and mastering, do you know what the best DA conversion is? None. Just don't come out of the box. Little, little side note there. Can analog equipment play a critical role in achieving a certain sound? Sure. But at the end of the day, it's the ears and the engineer, man. Um, you know, because analog certainly has its limitations too. And I would argue that, you know, a talented engineer will produce a better result with just a computer and their preferred plugins than like a beginner or amateur engineer with a studio full of all the all the pristine analog equipment. And that's because a good engineer understands that they're, they're still just tools at the end of the day to help you achieve a sound. And just because you want them to run your song through, let's say a Fairchild compressor with a specific saturation unit or a specific silk, uh, silk mode on a Rupert Neve piece, like they're the ones, it's their responsibility to understand if, if that's actually the best option for your sound, or maybe in some cases a plugin will help help achieve the results better. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's why no mastering engineer has some, you know, very uh, specific analog uh, mastering chain that they can just blindly pass audio through and, you know, always achieve a perfect result. That is more of the <laughs> instant online mastering uh, uh, set up, you know, just make it brighter, make it louder, boom, better. It just, it feels a little elitist in, in my opinion, you know, the, this kind of mindset that you have to have a hundred grand or more invested in your studio to put out a good mix and master. You know, I know that isn't exactly what they said in the comment, but I just don't think that it should be the big defining factor in, in comparison to, you know, what, what kind of sound the engineer can actually help through creativity and uh, you know focusing on the desires of the artists how they want the final production to sound regardless of equipment that's that should be what sways someone to, to trust an engineer in the reverse like I'm not gonna gatekeep musicians who want to send me their stuff that you know produced their electronic track on a Behringer synth or like you know recorded with a fender squire 200 dollars guitar through a little pv amp and it was done with an iphone microphone you know like i think in the creative space these days there's a lot of wild stuff going on production wise and um you know it all comes down to for me when i listen to the music do i think that there's something that i can add value to it to try to get it to some enhanced level or ultimately am I just not the engineer for this musician. I'm pretty sure that most of the mastering engineers out there that have these super high budget studios are also gonna charge a lot more for their services and as long as their skills match that then it's justified but <laughs> that's not always the case. And uh, I would argue that there's lots of producers out there that necessarily don't want to spend $300 or $500 or whatever on um, that kind of mastering service per song. We don't all have those kinds of budgets out there, so it's nice if you do. Um, but I think the you know you're you're bridging that gap between price and quality when you're selecting an engineer to try to help you achieve a sound with your music. And look, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and tout that I'm some you know fantastic mixing and mastering engineer that that knows everything. I just I have a passion for this, like I said, and, and um, have accumulated some knowledge and continue to try to grow the skills as I go forward. But ultimately what you meant by, you know, you've listened to my stuff and it sounds decent, you might have actually meant like, it sucks. I just want to deter people from from thinking that it's all about the equipment because, um, you know, I, I honestly thought about not even listing the gear on my website when I was designing it. 
and uh, there might be a point in the future where I just decide to take all that down and maybe just have my list of plugins that I use. Who knows? Anyways, it was uh, it was a respectful comment that that I enjoyed reading and thinking about. So if you guys agree or disagree with anything that I've talked about here, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. And hey, you know maybe maybe someday I'll have enough uh, you know analog mastering equipment to uh, entice you into letting me take a shot at engineering some of your music, and then I'll master the entire thing in the box and see if you can tell the difference. <laughs> I'm kidding. Or am I? Also, I'll be putting up some before and after examples on the homepage of my website of some of the mastering work that I've done so far. So if you guys want to check that out, the link is down in the description, nematomastering.com. And otherwise, uh, thanks for enduring my little rant here today with me. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.